and we have with us Jason Dows. Jason is from the Hope, Gillsburg, Colgate, Erie, Western Cass County, Eastern Steel County, North Dakota area. Uh, Jason Farms out there. Also, he is active with the local fire department. And the reason I got a hold of Jason was they had a little bit of a concern, if you will, last fall when they got the call about a neighbor in a grain bin. And so, Jason, would you care to introduce yourself and kind of set up what happened that day for our listeners? Good afternoon. I'm Jason Dowes here. I'm with the Page Fire Department, uh, also farm in the Page area. Uh, we got a call. I forget what time of the day it was. Uh, to individual trap in a grain bin. Uh, that's all we knew. And we responded along with uh, the Hope Fire Department. Yeah, tell us more. I mean, when you got that call and it came in from Hope and you guys were called out from Page to be of assistance, what's your plan? How does that work with mutual aid, that type of thing? Well, I guess as far as, you know, how it works, mutual aid, when they're first on scene and it's in their district, they are in charge of the scene and we are there to help and do whatever we need to do. Uh, you know, when we got there, they were in charge. They told us what to do. Uh, eventually, I got in the grain bin and kind of uh, helped with a lot of the inside activities. Well, their fire chief from Hope was in charge of all outside activities. Is kind of what we did and how we handled the situation. Um, what kind of training and prep do you do? Obviously, you hope never to have that call for a rescue, but what kind of training do you guys go through uh, to be able to rescue somebody out of these grain bins when the, when the these accidents uh, occasionally happen? So, you know, we've been lucky enough over the years to have uh, the rescue tubes, and uh, we try to do a training every other year with them, and we actually go up to our local elevator. We pull a semi in up over top of their dump. We fill the semi full of corn, and then we actually controlled, you know, we suck somebody down into the corn, you know, say just past their waist. And then everybody works with the tubes, learns how to use them, and actually we work at getting that person back out. It, it's, hmm. you know, training that you think, well, at the point, is this really worth it? But in the heat of the moment, it really makes a difference. No. Now, if somebody gets trapped in there, and I asked Bridget, and uh, I'll ask you as well, how long do they have uh, to survive in there before either being crushed or suffocated? How long, do, how long do they have before you can get to them and help? You know, I wish I could honestly answer that uh, question with a true time. You know, I okay. think everybody in that situation would be different. It all depends on your body type, how you've you know, how far are you sucked under, you know, all the, there's just so many factors. I don't know if I can give you an honest answer on okay. that. When you see what's going on, when you get that phone call, you mentioned that there are operations outside the bin versus what's going on inside the bin. Can you explain those two things? What's happening when you're trying to do a grain bin rescue? Well, I mean, inside and outside operations, you know, granted have to work very well together. Uh, we'll just kind of start on the outside operations. Um, you know, the person that's in charge out there, they're in charge of communicating on the inside with the people on the inside. Um, also in charge of opening, you know, the bin up in different locations to get the grain drained away uh, from the individual trapped inside the bin. They're also, you know, in charge of besides just getting those openings away, you have to have people to get that grain out farther away from the bin too. And, and uh, along with that, also EMS personnel on the outside waiting to do their job. It, uh, it, it's quite a task. And the people uh, that are there doing that job are remarkable how, of what they can do. The people on the inside, of course, you know, we were on the inside. We're working on getting the rescue tubes placed around the individual and down around the individual along with getting the corn out and away from the individual. Uh, luckily, by the time I got there, the person's head was above the corn again. So that was a relief and that person was talking to us. It's kind of a miracle that that person was in that state yet by the time we got there. Um, I guess I'm kind of trying to, you know, remember the day as we're sitting here visiting what all happened. It's what you'd almost call organized chaos, but yet in the end, everybody knows their job and just performs it. Right. And when those are happening, Jason, a lot of people would think just run over there with a payloader and punch a hole and knock that out so that person could come sliding out with the grain. Why is it you wouldn't want to do that? You know, Certain situations, that's not the best 
you know, reasoning or best option because you can actually suck that person farther down into the grain bin and trap them even deeper than they may be at the present moment. Um, you know, in this situation, and keep the less grain that bin from did down get broke open by a piece of farm machinery, uh, but they knew where the individual was at, and that's why that happened that day. But in most situations, that's usually not your best option. You need to get in the top of the bin, get down in there, and figure out where that person is at before you really just start cutting holes randomly. And Jason, how often does this occur around our area? Is this like a frequent thing that happens, or of the uncommon accidents that happen, is this one of the uncommon ones that happen more often than others? You know, I guess for me individually, in our department, this is the first one we've ever been on as far as an entrapment. Uh, I've been on the department probably 25 years now, and this is my first one. Uh, we do have an individual that was on the Hope Fire Department uh, who was originally a Devil's Lake firefighter for a few years, too. And I think he told me this was his second or third instance. So it's not real common, but the days that it does happen, we want to be prepared and ready for whatever does uh, present itself. And Jason, when these accidents do occur, is this a lack of knowing what to do? Is it a lack of, of, of sleep, like just not being aware? Or are there, uh, we had an emailer asking, you uh, are there any harnesses or any safety equipment that uh, that they can wear to, to kind of prevent this? Well, that would be your, your number one thing is having some safety equipment. Uh, you know, on our farm here, every time I go into a bin, I try to have a safety harness on with a rope tied off to the ladder. That way, um, if something does freakishly happen and I do go under, at least people know where I'm at and hopefully can get to me. Um, yes, that, that would be your best instance. You know, to, to speak on what truly ever really happens in these situations, I don't think you really know unless you're the one that's there. And things can happen so quick and so fast that sometimes it's tough to be prepared for everything other than try to do what you can to be as safe as you can with harnesses and be tied off to a location, you know, for safety. Right. And I've you know, heard Jason, before... We... We, we probably have some listeners who are wondering why you're in the bin in the first place and why would the grain actually suck you in? So can you give a little bit of a description of that as why as a farmer you might need to enter that bin? You know, sometimes the biggest reason as a farmer you might have to enter that bin is, you know, if you've had a storm and a bunch of snow has gotten blown in the top of your bins and you end up, you know, with ice chunks and those ice chunks will fall down in around the center pits or the center sumps of those bins and plug stuff up. And so... You know, sometimes maybe you're going in there with a, a long steel rod or something trying to break that chunk up to get it out of your way. Um, you know, I guess other situations to be in there, you're maybe just in checking the quality of your grain, you know, if you have, you know, just to see what things are like and make sure it's keeping okay too. And I've heard before that you fall in and you start getting pulled under or whatnot, you shouldn't just wrap a rope around somebody or pull them out by their harness, get something and just with a piece of machinery and just pull them straight out. Why, why may that be a bad idea to do something like that for someone who is stuck in one of these situations, Jason? Well, in those situations, there is so much pressure of the grain around them. If you try to do that, you are physically going to injure them and hurt them severely and, and could even traumatically hurt them um, is the situation. And, you know, from some of the training we've done, I think firsthand, if you've ever been sucked down into grain, just the pressure that it puts on your body and your uh, ability not to even move, it's unbelievable. I, in our trainings, I have been sucked down into the grain. I, I've been sucked down into, say, about just about my middle of my chest. And then the guys worked to get me out. And, you know, they were all standing there and watched me get sucked down in. And I was talking to them the whole time. And it was unbelievable by the time they got me out, which wasn't that long, how out of breath I was just from the pressure of the corn compressing mm -hmm. on me. Wow. Right. If you could describe what that pressure, that, that feeling, and even in, uh, you know, a controlled situation, what was going through your mind during that trial exercise? What was that like? You know, it's been a few years, so I, I can't really remember what was going through my mind completely. You know, I, 
I was probably talking to our guys as much as anything because I was the most trained at that time as far as what to do. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of remember talking to our guys, hey, do this, do this, do that to get me out. But in the back of your mind, feeling that pressure and kind of realizing you're starting to get a little short of breath, I think the biggest thing to remember is relax, breathe. You know, that, that will help you, you know, just to stay calm too. Right. And, and we were just kind of touching on, you know, don't pull somebody out if they get sucked into one of these grain grain bins what would you say for like this happens it's going to take time for someone to get out there to help you what is something that someone could do or if someone is there with them what is something that they could do to help or to wait it out until the rescue team arrives you you know biggest thing is talk to them be calm talk to them Uh, i mean it may be even as simple as you know what's the temperature out today just talk to them it's amazing by talking to people how much calmer you can keep them um if you have the ability to you know if they're still above the corn or above the grain and visiting with you you know even if you have like a garbage can or anything put it over top of them so then it will keep the the grain from flowing down over top of them to cover them up completely and and then just you know, be patient and wait for the rescuers to get there, and they will get there as quick as they can. And it feels like an eternity when you're waiting, but just be patient and they will get there. Jason, do you think it makes a difference if you're in a bin of corn or soybeans or wheat, how quickly you can be swamped into that grain, or it's all very much the same? Do you know if there's any difference in between those crops? Boy, I, I wish I could honestly speak on that. I mean, bridged up grain is sure. bridged up grain. I, I can't imagine that, you know, any of those three crops would be a lot different, but I can't 100% speak on that either. Sure. No, that's fair. And, you know, I think about grain bins and as a kid cleaning out bins, right? So there was just stuff on the on the ground and you, know, you had a, a door open at the bottom Maybe the top opening was was open. You could get some sunlight, and it's still kind of dark and dingy in there. So, really, as a fireman, when you're inside that that grain bin with with the person who's stuck in the grain, it's not exactly an easy place to work because you could get sucked in. It's pretty dark to see what you're doing. All of those factors into to what you're doing at that point to try to help the other person out, right? Very true. Very true. You know, there there's so many factors that go in, and, and your whole focus is trying to get that person out, but you need to focus on keeping your own uh, rescue personnel safe at the same time. And, and the lighting is definitely a factor. It's it's dark in there. And, you know, when it's dark in that, you need to slow down and take your time, too, so you don't do something that will, um, you know, have a detriment effect on the whole situation, too. Well, and it also, you're, you're in a small town area, you know, you're out in western Cass County, we all know our neighbors out there. We know each other. And so when that call comes in, it probably is an even more of a panic because you know the farm, you might know who's in the bin. Does that weigh in on any, any of your decisions as you're going to that rescue? No, it really can't weigh in on your deci- on your decision making. You, you know, are, are responding to a, in a, you know, an unfortunate situation. And the biggest thing, you just have to stay calm, do your job. And uh, there will be, you know, times to reflect and think about things after the past or after the fact but in that situation you just have to rely on your training do what you need to do and try to stay as calm as you can and and work through the situation it's and it's an ever-changing situation when you're involved in those things too i mean things changed for us by the minute by the second on what we needed to do too it's it was a, a very interesting experience to be a part of but not something that i ever would really wish upon anybody though either Mm -hmm. absolutely and and as we have our last couple of minutes here jason so you've been on the fire department for some time over in hope or excuse me over in page and any plug you want to give for folks for volunteering or getting involved in those in those instances i mean how many years have you been on the department and why are the things that you do it you know i've been on i think we're pushing 25 years now since i've been on um you know, I guess a lot of the people that do respond, you know, whether or not you're on fire, whether or not you're on an EMS side of things, I, I think a lot of people do it just because they feel, you know, a strong connection to their community and their surrounding area, and they want to be able to help people. And bottom line, if you're living in one of these small communities or in any area where you have the opportunity to do it and you think it's something you want to do, 
reach out to that um, ambulance crew, reach out to that fire department. Everybody's always looking for people that are willing to help no matter the situation.